know, the root of the conversation is is not necessarily that. I, I think we're at a point now collectively that none of us believe that UEFA are in the right. So it's right. Uh, I, a point I made a few days ago, probably the only thing that I said that wasn't outdated because everything is outdated <laughs> instantly. Even like part one that we recorded before the game is outdated because Florentino had mm. quotes now. Uh, but one of the things I think that holds up, like I said a few days ago, was that it's evil versus a less, lesser evil. I, I, that's kind of the way I look at this. Um, I think there's a way to do this, but it's not the way it's been presented. And, and certainly I don't think anybody, any of these entities are in, in the quote unquote in the right. So um, then it kind of transitions you into non ESL stuff like transfers. I mean, I guess it ties in a little bit because Florentino mm-hmm. kept saying like, we can't have a big summer of signing of transfers if we don't have something like this. So he basically was saying like, to me, this is my interpretation. This is not something he said or, or anything I can prove, but I was just kind of reading mm-hmm. between the lines. I think this was his way of saying like, okay, you voted against this. So don't get mad at me when I don't sign Mbappe and Haaland for you because it's not possible. That's mm-hmm. kind of the, what, what, what I took away from, from this, his intentions of going on air. Yeah, and, that, and that's not really anything too new, is it? That's kind of the, the party line we've, held, we've heard for a while since the summer when, when no players were signed um, because of the coronavirus pandemic. And, you know, that's something Florentino has maintained because if he can produce a Haaland or an Mbappe, then it's a big win. But if he sort of convinces everybody um, into thinking that that probably won't happen, then people will be less disappointed. So um, you don't want to overpromise. You want to... Um, over deliver so I think that's been a tactic for a while since the summer since now and that goes back to the other kind of point that was made someone actually challenged him on this was saying like which is it Florentino like you've said you've been working on this for three years but you've also said that the coronavirus pandemic has made you have to do this like which one is it because there wasn't a pandemic three years ago and he basically said you know we've been thinking about it for a while but now the pandemic means we've had to accelerate it okay um the pandemic means a lot of things, but if this doesn't happen, then 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 what? Like um, he was basically making the point of uh, because of the pandemic, because of the way football was going anyway, nobody can afford Mbappe's, nobody can afford Neymar's, nobody can afford Haaland's. Well, yeah, no, I mean they're going to play somewhere. Like they're not going to not be they're not going to be so unaffordable that they can't get a team. They'll be on somebody's books. It's more the case of who can buy it from who, and you know that's. If everyone is paying the same kind of fees for each other, then things can happen, you know. Look at, for example, Atletico Madrid. They lose Griezmann, they sign draft leagues for pretty much the exact same price. These kind of transactions can still happen because uh, the net gain is the same. So um, it's, a, it's, a closed, uh, it's a closed circle. It's a closed uh, pool of, of players, of transfers. So the idea that uh, nobody can afford Mbappe, Neymar, Haaland, I mean, that's just not true. They'll play somewhere. So it's, it's more just about jostling for position and for power. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I think the coronavirus has been an, a convenient excuse for in this situation, in other aspects of football, and just in general life as well, for politicians as well. The coronavirus has, has been a convenient excuse for pushing through some things that people had planned for a long time ago anyway. Yeah, certainly. I, I mean, I think if Real Madrid once had... Uh, a clear spot at the top of the food chain that, that doesn't really exist anymore. And there's, there's plenty of competition. So, um, I mean, and, and with regards to signings and money and stuff, I mean, Alaba now reportedly signing a five-year contract. So sure, that's a free signing, but we all know that's not necessarily free with all the agent fees and, and the amount of salary he'll get. And, you know, it's, it's still something on the books, which leads us to another discussion um, with the Alaba signing he spoke a lot about Ramos and Modric's contract, which was interesting. So um, Ramos, mm. I, I mean, he was asked about Ramos a lot and he basically came out flat and said, 